Okay. Right, now time for reality check for me, I think. <laughs> <laughs> this one is nice and it was well built. And yeah. at that price, I think... Uh, it's pretty good. It's, it's, it's good certainly, deal. definitely worth looking at. Yeah. Okay. I'm a little bit dubious about putting this on YouTube because if yeah, someone sees this... Yeah, they might snap it yeah. up before you. Please yeah. don't do that, okay? <laughs> My first time setting foot on a warren oh, cat. Very small warren cat. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. I could, I could, I know, I could live in a space like this. I really, I really do like small spaces. Well, thank you very much for your You're very hospitality. Welcome. Good yeah. luck with whatever adventure you do. Yeah. And it's fantastic. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, it was Come really nice. And enjoy. Thank Love you very much. Okay, Dino. safe journey. Cheers. Bye bye. Ready to go? Ready for some driving. Three hours to Cornwall? Yes. <laughs> so I've come to meet Hanukkah of Warham Designs. Really nice to meet you. Yeah, I'm gonna stay here for a couple of nights. I'm gonna take a look around the place, learn a lot about the designs, and yeah, we'll get some, some nice footage over the next couple of days. And we're gonna go check out the workshop now. Well, this is where we uh, live on the edge of the creek, really. Yeah, yeah. When it's high tide, water comes in. Looking a bit cold and sad. <laughs> <laughs> this is such a nice location. So, the water comes in. Well, we had our guy actually at the back here, also when she was first launched. But the water could um. come right up, up there, actually, so... It's a spare depth actually, she would still be able to float there. So this is a 24? 24, yeah. 23 and a half precisely actually, and it's exactly the same size yeah. as the first catamaran James sailed across the Atlantic. Ah, it's pretty okay. minimalist really. Was it, it's Rory McDougall, right? Yeah, he sailed, he sailed the 21, which is even smaller than this in yeah. the world. Unbelievable. Tiki 21 went around the world. It just it just goes to show like the sea keeping mm. abilities of these boats. Uh, mm. I just think they're absolutely beautiful. Is that like a, a it's a mizzen, isn't it? Yeah, it's, yeah. This one doesn't have a forestay and doesn't have a jib. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, it's okay. more of a, what you call a cat rig. So the mast is further forward, and so that's the mainsail. And then we have uh, a small mizzen which helps with any tacking if you need it. Yeah. Uh, whereas on other catamarans you will back the stay sail jib yeah, to yeah, take yeah. the ground. But with this one you can actually use the mizzen for that. You pull it over to windward when you tack. Yeah, and yeah. It just brings the boat around a bit quicker. So you guys have had this place for 40 since years? 19, 40 years, since yeah. 1982. Right. And uh, well, since then we have built this, well we built this workshop in the mid 80s. And in here you've built you well, were just saying yeah a well 60 originally this was all workshop and we built our big 63 footer in here all right <laughs> and then after all, these boats were all out in 2000 we converted this end into our office so here is entrance to the workshop yeah so this is the big workshop that uh, originally had spirit of Gaia in it but uh, then it was open right to the end Right. The hole started about behind you here when you came in yeah. and finished at the, at yeah. the creek end. And uh, there were also two Tiki 36s built in here. And all sorts of boat paints and ropes and that. And then here we come to the, the archive and ah, okay. <laughs> section and, right. and, and the craft bench, model making craft bench here. Oh, amazing. Things. And this is a large numbers of our magazines, which is very difficult to find a place to keep anywhere. It's a model of the um, Tama Moana design, the one they oh, sailed okay. in the Lapita voyage in. Oh, yeah, yeah, and, uh, yeah. And then in here. Ah, okay, so this is the office. So, are you, you're continuing continuously? Of con Continu continuously designing, well, re I redesigning? Do, I do design work, I do a lot of answering of builders' questions. 
mm. which come in all the time. So I spend a lot of time just writing emails. Yeah. And then I've got to update certain design things or, you know, create some new stuff. I mean, I intend to actually bring out one of the professional designs as a self-built design. Ah, okay. This way, so I, won't, I won't say which one at the moment, otherwise everybody yeah. starts asking me, but uh, yeah. that's the plan. I'm helping my son at the moment doing some tiny house design. <laughs> <laughs> James and I used to share this office. He would do his writing there, and I would do my work over here. Oh, amazing. So nice to be here. Yeah. In this, in this place where so many this great is, boats have been this designed. This is a model of the Amatazi, which is you know, the last ethnic design we did, really. And we built that prototype of that one back in 2012 here. Oh, she's in farms now, still oh, okay. locally owned. Yeah, it helps quite a lot with this design if you can build a model. Yeah. Because this model is, is built exactly as the real thing. If you look in here, you know, it's built out of plywood. Oh, to scale little, little with the fillets. boxy fillets and everything. Amazing. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and the platform is all lashed on just like it would be done for real. Yeah. And this little cuddy. It, it, in reality also it can actually be removed. Yeah. Hatch opens. Amazing. Washboard comes out. <laughs> 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 I love making models actually. I've always made them. Uh. But you can practice different things. I mean, we were first going to use a normal steering paddle back here. Mm. But then they actually designed Indonesian style side rudders that look more like this and they go here. Okay. You see? In yeah. fact, the pencil line on it is the actual shape we made it. Mm. Models are quite useful, really, to, to play the scenes and work out how they go. Yeah, yeah. And you can have a really nice, I mean, you can do this on computers perhaps, but to, mm. to look at the whole shape, you know, on a model, you can get really nice 3D feel yeah, yeah. of the shaping and how they will go through the water. James used to love models like this to see, you know, how about how it feels. You can yeah, yeah. this tactile thing. <laughs> which you, yeah, and there's other models here as well. That one on top of the cover there is actually very old from the 70s. It was a... A prototype we once tried. Right. Really one of the early ethnic ideas. That's a really early model built in 1973 by me. Um, the idea was to build these holes. And it was a, one of James's ideas. He thought, you know, this was the time when people were building in foam sandwich and things like that. Oh. And these holes were actually made out of a relatively low density polyurethane foam. Okay. And the idea was you could make them like a, like a layer cake. Mm. And each layer, people would get the exact dimensions of, so they would cut the layers out, glue them together, yeah, and then shave them down until they were until smooth. Was, yeah. And then you got the exact shape. And we actually did that. They worked okay. And then they were glassed all over on the outside. The problem was they were a little bit flexible. You know, with having a forestay here, bows were being pulled together and... There was a sort of tendency here of the holes to start bending a little bit. Right. <laughs> this is the original tiller of the first Tangaroa. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, the boat, the same size as the one you've just filmed outside. Uh, okay. It's uh, slightly crude, but uh, it's still there. <laughs> Amazing. That's the Tiki 21. Yeah. It's the boat that the Rory sailed around the world, and it was designed in 1981 or 82, right. 81, I think we started that. And it won a prize in Cruising World magazine in America, it's a oh, tradable yeah. gun holder. <laughs> and uh, we've sold over thousands of those right. designs. What's this one? This is a Tiki 31, and it was designed as a work boat, so it's it's got actually open cockpits in the middle of the hole. So it was the idea you can work over the side, maybe fishing or what people want mm -hmm. to do. It's a, it's a bit niche market because as a work boat, mm -hmm. and then there are quite a few people buy them and they want to cover the whole middle it up again. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of defeats the object a bit, but the drawing over there is, it shows what it would look like for real. Well, this, this is my little curiosity cabinet. Really. The top shelf is, is, is the Pacific there. Mm. There's some small pieces of um, Lapita pottery there, 
and then these various fish hooks and, and carved fish are all from Tikopia and that's a typical Tikopian fan and of course here is all the more books <laughs> and of course this book James's own personal copy this oh. is the one he was picking up and looking through regularly yeah it's, it's, it's a bit faded because it's been lying out in the sunshine important books all to do with the Pacific and other things. Here is the famous book Canoes of Oceania. This is the mm. book which has got all the information of books for, of the Pacific which was all collected in the 1930s okay. by Haddon and Hornell and they assembled it and published this book. This is a later edition yeah. of it but I think they're difficult to get now. Right. And there's a French similar books, Polynesian seafaring, very sort of iconic book, Vaca yeah. Moana was a big taratai, another replica boats out the Pacific. Good morning, uh, here I am, or should I say here we are. I don't usually let Yoshi sleep in the bed but it's quite cold these days so he gets really cold if he's uh, not under a cover. So I'm staying in the Warham cabin, I feel very privileged. I ask people to send me some boats that they've seen online. That includes a few Warhams, so today I'm going to show Hanukkah those boats and see what she thinks. She probably knows who built them and she'll probably know a little bit about them, so I mean, who better to ask than Hanukkah? I'm also going to ask her some questions on camera about uh, my plans to build or buy. A lot of people are saying, don't build, a, don't build one, Mark. Building a cataract, building a boat is not for you, not for you mate, that's probably right, but we'll find out a little bit more about that, and also, I'll probably also make a separate film about the history and everything about these boats, these beautiful boats, that'll probably be uploaded separately to this vlog, but keep an eye out for that. Yeah, today I'm going to do a lot of filming and um, find out even more. <laughs> Just taking a look on board Manor. The little beauty. My first time setting foot on a Warren Cat. Very small Warren Cat. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. And we have a little bit of tide on it. Yeah. It's just so. I think basic is a bad word, but like just so simple, minimal. This is. Galley cabin. Galley cabin. Oh, amazing. Washboard team can go inside. Everything's lashed together. Yeah, it's all a bit green at the moment, but uh, those are the sort of figure of eight lashings that yeah. we're talking about. Oh. <laughs> Look bunk, at that. bunk cushions have all been removed. So it doesn't right. look quite so nice, but it's a little galley. This is amazing. Would you put a little stove? Would yeah, the stove is uh, out at the moment. We, yeah. we used it somewhere else. But uh, we have a little stove just there where the cups are now. Yeah. And stow things underneath, and there's a big space behind yeah. there where you can stow things. I could, I could, I know I could live in a space like this. I really, I really do like small spaces. It's a nice bunk behind you there. Yeah. It's quite a good space. Also, you can see how the woods join together with the jigsaw. Now this is of course the CNC cut wood and they can make these yeah. nice little puzzle joints that fit exactly. Yeah. Oh amazing. I love it. Ah oh, that's your stove, yeah. I just love the fact that you can access everything. You know, if if, if you were to have a problem, you yeah, can you can see it. Outside of the boat, you yeah. can see if there's a like a breach or anything like yeah, that. If you punch a hole in it, you just touch it up. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think I think my fillets uh, yeah. would be interesting. A lot of people have commented on a recent video that uh, maybe I should really think twice about building <laughs> after looking at uh, some other videos of ours in the past. But so when you when you've got all the sails and rigging and it well the yeah. sails up, you still have a you lot have of space. You've all this space, here. yeah. As well, there's the sail is there. There's no boom. It yeah. cheats on the aft beam here, and you can sit here or there. Right. Quite comfy. And then there's tillers on there, of course, and the tiller bar. And right. we have some little tiller extensions on it too, so you can sit quite comfy here. Yeah. It's your tiller extension. Tuck your cup of tea in the corner there, <laughs> it doesn't fall off. And um, I've got a compass that actually sits in a box and I just square it up with here or there. And yeah, yeah. If you need a compass. Well, this is, of course, laid up for winter. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. put everything in the cabin there, the sails and that. Yeah. The bunk cushions are all put in the house to keep dry and yeah. free of any mould. Yeah, that's the problem in the UK, isn't it? Everything goes Very green, moist. look at it. Yeah. This boat looked beautiful back in August and yeah. this is a few months later and everything has gone green. Yeah. Yes, I mean it's very very possible to cruise on these these things you definitely have to uh, be quite minimalist well and, if you uh, think that the ta first tangaroa was the same size as this one yeah yeah it's uh, same overall length anyway but it had more volume of course well if you think of rory mcdougall in the 21 footer which was yeah. even smaller than this yeah and yeah. he went all the way around well you, you can't really sit up properly in the cabins so he had to yeah. make extra little arched uh, little tents over each hole in order yeah, to yeah. sit up straight yeah, I mean, yeah. it's just some single little bunk to slide yeah. in this, this is luxury bike <laughs> yeah yeah. <coughs> yeah yeah there's uh, videos as well on youtube of rory's uh, exploits yeah some really fast mm. and no he's amazing exhilarating. actually and yeah. he's such a modest man yeah yeah, yeah he doesn't uh, brag about what he's done no. at all oh, that's good he's just done it yeah yeah I like that. No. Okay. Right, now time for reality check for me, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd like to know what you think for, for my needs. Obviously, we've talked a little bit yeah. about it. I, I'd like to go around the world. and I'd like a little bit of comfort. I'm, I'm not too bad in small spaces. And how many people do you reckon could be uh, on the boat? I'd like to have like up to three, four mm -hmm. other crew members. Yeah. Well, if one is your partner, you would be sharing mm. space. Yeah, if yeah. They're all individuals, you know, slightly different. Yeah, so you'd like to have a double, well, I'd like yeah. to have a double bed. Well, I would say for that, the minimum to have reasonable comfort would be like a Tiki 30. Okay, yeah, yeah. On the other hand, if you have a Tiki 30 with deck board, mm. you've got a very comfy little centre cabin, ah, and okay. as well as the whole cabin, so from that right. point of view. On the other hand, in the tropics, the open deck is nice. Yeah, yeah. But for general living accommodation with the deck port, you've got just right. a bit more space to be inside as well as out. Ah, okay. Generally, sort of the maybe optimum small family cruiser mm -hmm. yeah, is the Tiki 38. Yeah, yeah. Of course, there are also still the classic design equivalents, you know, like a Tangaro Mark IV would do something mm -hmm. similar. Mm -hmm. If you can buy one somewhere, mm, mm. A nice one. Tangaroa, I thought, was a nice boat and sailed well, so right. you can look out for those. Yeah, yeah. There's some, you know, like the 40 foot classic designs, like the Narais, and yeah. that, if they come up for sale second hand. Yeah. Good, tough cruising boat. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, not quite as quick because they're often a bit blunter and things, and uh -huh. so they, they don't go quite as quick as the Tiki's do. But right. But just, but I mean, there have been, those boats have sailed around the world, lots mm -hmm. of them, very happily. Bigger than that, I wouldn't really go much bigger than 40, 42, no, you know, about no. the sort of Narai size. Yeah, so you have to take into consideration the costs. I mean, marina trips are exactly. kind of inevitable, but I think we, we're the, uh, the thing I loved about catamarans is mm. they're so comfortable at anchor. You're yeah, not, you don't want to, yeah, because you don't roll. Yeah. I mean, we generally always try to anchor. Yeah, yeah. Marinas yeah. are rare. Yeah, very yeah, rare. yeah. These days, I think, or from what I've heard, costs of materials is kind of rising a little bit. Yeah, but bit. this last year, I don't know whether it's due to Brexit or just other factors, but wood prices have doubled almost. Right, okay. Yeah, you know, they've got really expensive. Okay. And to get good quality wood, it's also harder. Yeah. You know, whereas we could buy Douglas fir plywood in the local timber yards. 
doesn't exist anymore. Right. The plywood you buy are all dubious wood qualities. Right, okay. And you don't know whether they're rot resistant and mm. generally not. And if you go for marine plywood, it gets yeah. more expensive again. What I about? mean, we've, we've had good suppliers at the uh, Robbins Timbers actually in Bristol, which is where we always go to for our boat building uh, okay. plywoods and Douglas fir timber. And, mm. and we know we get a good quality, like when we built the Mana Kit, so that all uh, came okay. from there. Mm. What about um, looking at places like Asia or maybe different places around the world to, to build? To, well, they're all tropics. Right. And building in tropics has its own disadvantages. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so you know, there's humidity, and uh -huh. uh, I know you can get cheaper labour for people to help you. Yeah. If you were there all the time supervising, you know what you're doing, and mm. you can guide labour. But to mm. just leave people to it to build a boat for you. Yeah. I, I mean, we've I got our builder in the Philippines, but he's not that cheap because he, there's a lot of admin. Right. Huge amount of bureaucracy in the Philippines. Yeah, yeah. And he has to look after his workers. He pays them a decent wage for local, but he gives them yeah. six sickness benefits. They need holidays, right. and this and that and the other, and yeah. it all adds up. Yeah, you know, yeah. Some people think, oh, it's all cheap, cheap, cheap. But if you want to keep people to work for you, you've got to look after them. Yeah, you know, exactly. You have some, need some security. So I guess if we were to look at the build time for, say, a Tiggy 30 and a 38, what would you say, roughly? Yeah, I would have to look it up. Yeah. <laughs> because I don't have these figures uh, in my okay. head. I mean, the, the figures we quote are possibly optimistic. Right. If you count everything in. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I did do some figures for the mana, which are actually on our website, mm -hmm. because we timed that one precisely. Ah, uh, okay. And I think a, nearly a third of the overall was just sanding, finishing and painting. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. You see? When, but, once so, you've got to that stage, you're you like, said, ah, uh, I have my boat, so you're feeling pretty good. Yeah, so <laughs> then you can put up with that extra yeah, work just yeah. to finish it. So if we were to quote all that time, People say, oh, I'm never going to build a boat. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. So you, and anyway, they vary these times from builder to builder. Mm. Some people build really quite fast, mm. and not mm. necessarily badly, mm. but they're just good at building fast. Mm. Those mm. other people are really slow and they right. think a lot. And they're thinking time. Yeah, yeah. And there's getting to your workshop and back time, yeah. and there's sweeping the floor time, and there's yeah. warming things up because it's winter time, yeah. and building an extra tent around your boat time. And, yeah. You know, if you start adding all those up, then obviously yeah. the hours built up. So, but the, the, so the hours we quote is sort of actually proper building time. Okay. If you, you know, basically working moderately, efficiently mm. at doing it. Mm. And not making mistakes and having to yeah, do things yeah. like a down <laughs> which, which would be impossible for me. Yeah. But the plants, of course, do give a lot of detail. Mm -hmm. And they are designed for people with little experience. Mm -hmm. And it really takes you step by step through and tries to explain things. And they're very pictorial. You know, all sorts of things, how to make epoxy fillets, how to do glassing with epoxy. Mm -hmm. And we've now also made some videos about making epoxy fillets mm -hmm. and glassing. Yeah, so yeah. People can refer to them as well. Yeah, I've seen those actually. Um, how to do a good a good fillet um, yeah. on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I tried to film that. I thought it was important to yeah, show yeah. how to do it. And it's not just making good fillets, but also not wasting epoxy. Yeah. That, that's quite an important yeah. thing actually, because you can show a fillet and then you've got sort of a bunch of epoxy left in the pot. If you don't use it, it's waste. Yeah. And it's so, not cheap. <laughs> I, yeah, it's not cheap. So I try to use every scrap of it. Yeah. So yeah. you mustn't make too much, so that if you're slow, it starts going off in your pot, mm. and then you can't use yeah. it. So yeah. yeah, there's lots of things which just with experience yeah. you learn how to do properly. It's going to take me years, two, three years. Yeah, two, uh, to build a Tiki Thirty Eight, mm -hmm. you can count on two or three years. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's a it's a big commitment, but yeah. Uh, very so rewarding. you at your young age and wanting to sail. You, I think it's worthwhile looking at second-hand boats yeah. because there's quite a few come up mm -hmm. and some are really good and some are bad yeah, and yeah. Uh, you have to really yeah, check yeah. carefully. I've seen some beautiful ones that people have bought second-hand. Yeah. You know, there, there are some people that love building boats yeah. and then in the end they don't actually particularly enjoy the sailing uh, okay, and if yeah. you can pick up one of those because yeah. they want to move on and they sell it often at not really the market price yeah, because yeah. they sometimes they're beautifully built better than yeah. professional you know mm. and uh, but because they self-built people are modest and don't ask the amount of money they yeah. could ask for it. Yeah, yeah.
that's yeah. that's the lucky dip really yeah um yeah i'll just keep my keep my eyes out but yeah, yeah you're right i think where i am now it is pointing more towards uh purchasing yeah. a used one so if i was to buy a warum mm -hmm. what sort of things should i be looking for what sort of things pop up well first of all just look at how it comes over to you what's the workmanship like mm. are all the edges nicely right, softened and rounded off mm. are the fillets if it's made with epoxy are the fillets made nicely mm. you know how's the epoxy coating mm. just just stepping in the cabin you very quickly get an idea of whether this was a nice builder mm. or whether it was a bit rough right now if it was a bit rough it could be worth looking again yeah. But then also look in bilges and in the ends and that. And yeah, if yeah, it's yeah. all a bit on the rough side, you know. Yeah, yeah. You know, you always yeah. have a rough boat. Yeah, yeah. And you don't know how good other things have been done. Age, of course, you want to look at. Mm, mm. Though a very well-built boat can last 30 years and still mm. be good, mm. okay? Yeah, yeah. But a badly built boat won't last that long. Uh. The, the glues in the 70s, um, they used to build wooden airplanes during wartime. Right. And they used urea formaldehyde glues. Okay. So, like, our tahini was built with that. Right. The resource was used on outer keel planks and things like that. Mm. But all the ply planking was glued with that to the stringers and okay. all the interior work was done with that. Problem with that glue is, after about 15 years, it does deteriorate. Right. It tends to sort of harden and crystallise. Right, okay. In particular, if the wood's slightly damp, it just comes out. Ah, uh, okay. Flakes. So, so if, if a boat is built like that, yeah. and you see that, you can get a knife sometimes between the stringer and the plywood and bits come out. Uh, yeah, I was going to say... Bad news, that. Yeah. Because, um, actually, the first boat Hans Clare had was a Tahini, mm. built up north where you come from. Right. He bought it in 1990 or something. Mm. Sailed it down here, came into Falmouth, sailed it all the way to South Africa, right, converted yeah. it to ethnic there with crab claw rig, etc. Yeah, yeah. Sailed it to New Zealand, wow. and it, then it got sold. That boat is now in North Queensland, right. and somebody is completely rebuilding it. Right. But it had the urea formaldehyde glue, so uh. he has had the decks off, he's had to re glue bulkheads in, it's practically yeah. rebuilt. Can you tell visually what? what just, is there anything to look look out for to, to, to find that? Well, uh, you've got to well, take a little screwdriver or something yeah. with you as well. Yeah. If, it, yeah. if anywhere it looks a bit dubious, see if it's soft. Yeah. You yeah. just press with your fingers sometimes yeah. if yeah. it's painted. If paint forms little cracks on the surface, right. bad news. Okay. Usually there's rot underneath and then the paint starts cracking on the ah, surface. Okay. okay. I mean, look if the boat has been epoxy glassed on the outside. Mm -hmm. You see, early ones may not be. Mm -hmm. Some some have been sheathed with nylon and resourceful glue, which is good. It used mm -hmm. to be called cask over sheathing. Mm -hmm. So it, they basically glue nylon cloth on the outside with this brown glue. Mm -hmm. Very good actually, because even if you get hit by something, the nylon stretches, mm -hmm. doesn't tend to break. Mm -hmm. If it, a boat is glassed with polyester resin, which mm -hmm. was also done in the 70s, mm -hmm. That can be bad news, yeah, because yeah. that doesn't adhere well. And I've heard of one where the whole when sailing across the Atlantic, this, this somehow this glassing got loose at one end, and suddenly there was this big ripping noise, and a huge sheet oh, of no. polyester glass up. came off the outside and oh. just washed. So that's bad news. Yeah. Later ones built in the eighties often have used epoxies, mm. so that's good. And then you just need to look at workmanship and see mm -hmm. when yeah, it's done yeah. nicely or not that nicely. Okay. You probably can see that fairly quickly. Right. Then the other thing is, has it been in use all the time or has it been sitting somewhere for years mm -hmm. unattended? Yeah, yeah. And then, yeah. you know, then you get rot and mildew and yeah, all sorts. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, if you see mildew anywhere, you know, just stop. Right, yeah. <laughs> Sniff as well. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely good things to, to look yeah, out for. Yeah, yeah and I, I was going to say, what's kind of like the repair process? I know you've just gone, gone over well, it. Well, the repair the process, thing. remove all rotten wood, mm. replace it with new wood. Actually, my, my latest bit of thought is, if it is adjacent to another bit of wood you're slightly worried about, yeah. get some anti-rot chemical, mm. you know, in the pot, liquid. Mm. Treat the wood adjacent to it with that. Mm. Let it fully dry out again, then glue your new wood in. Okay. Because that, I, I should have done that in some places. I have one piece of hatch combing, mm. which I'd, I'd replaced most of one hatch 
and I had left one piece because I thought it was perfectly hard and good. There's nothing mm. wrong with it. Of course, a year later, I look at it and the paint is doing little cracks. Uh, okay. uh, yeah, it's not yeah. good. It wasn't fully rotten yet. It wasn't soft yet. Yeah. So what I did, I drilled little holes from the inside where you didn't see them mm. into the wood, you know, little holes, and squirted. Mm. Okay, you know, the chemical, yeah. The, the sort of, you know, it's like cuprinol type chemicals. So uh, there are other uh, ones. Actually, in Greece, they sell some good ones. Yeah, right. And wood borders all together. Yeah, <laughs> they do yeah. all the three and they put that in. And it's, it's a fairly volatile liquid, so it doesn't leave oil in the wood. Mm. And I put that in, and now, five years later, mm. that wood hasn't rotted further. See but you always see. look at all your bits, you know, if you have wooden hatches, look at them, look at the underside, mm. see what's going on, mm. any sort of bits of fungal growth anywhere, it's not sign good. of rot. Right. Okay? Okay. Yeah. There's not many boats or kind of boats in my price range for sale online, no. but there are. There? What have you found so far? We've managed to find a few. This one. What's that? It's a Nara Mark IV. Mm. The year I think I know that boat. Right. Um, if I'm not mistaken, what does it say about it? Well, if I'm not mistaken, 1980, that could be the boat built in Plymouth by Steve Turner. Right. Okay. And uh, because I was in 98, in fact, I, I knew that boat when they were building it. And in 1980, it was finished and they sailed into Sorkham when we were there. Right. And uh, it was built for a Dutchman. Mm. You know, professional. Professionally, I mean, it was a sort of one-off build, but Steve had built a lot of boats for Right. And uh, it was called Kumara at the time, but I don't know what it's... But if that's the boat now, it's looking mm. pretty nice, actually. Yeah, it looks it looks good. And If that is for sale at the price you can afford, I, that wouldn't mm. be a bad buy, actually. It yeah. is, actually. Is it still? Yeah, 26,900 euros. And where is it now? It, in, in Greece already. Mm. I was oh, looking God. at, I would follow that up, yeah. actually. So I've emailed yeah, no, it's the looking guy. very nice, actually, still. I mean, it is 1980, it's an old boat, but mm. somebody obviously has looked after it well. Yeah. Nice, spacious boat. Yeah, you can it's see sort of, the whole, the Yeah, the they, they're quite, they, they've got quite high volume boats, but there's been an Austrian boat called uh, Sailed Around the World, one of those. Right. We right. met it in the sort of early 2000s in Corfu and they've been around the world, wrote a book about it. Right. But this one is nice and it was well built. And yeah. at that price, I think... Uh, it's pretty good. It's, it's, it's good certainly, deal. definitely worth looking at. Yeah. Okay. I'm a little bit dubious about putting this on YouTube because if yeah, someone if sees this, that, they might snap it yeah. up before you. <laughs> so <laughs> please yeah. don't do that, okay? <laughs> yeah. All right, Warren Tiki. Not many photos Tiki in Florida. Tiki 38 in Florida. Can I have a look at mm. know who that is? Really, not much information. Just a few pictures. So I don't. There's not really much we can go on. Yeah. Well, that definitely looks nice. Mm. I would say well built. Yeah. Okay. You can just tell. Yeah. yeah, I can just tell. Well built. So, yeah, and it's just, it just looks like the whole, I mean, it probably just needs a bit of work, maybe. Just. Yeah. Are there any more pictures down here? Mm, let's see, there's this one. Hmm. That's for sale now. It, it, it mm. has not got a deck pod, by the looks of it. Mm. So maybe you could add one, but otherwise it looks that one. Well, there's a big hole where the deck pod normally is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so they've taken it off or something. Yeah. What's going on there? <laughs> Just let me have a quick look. Yeah, outside may be a bit worn, I don't know, but the inside certainly looked mm. like it was all certainly well built to start with. Mm. All right, and then the other one we've got is a uh, Pahi... Oh, no, 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 I lost it. Someone sent us a link to this one in Aruba, Netherlands, Antilles. I know this what that that is. Really? You know, what that you is? know it? It's the one we built in Ireland I was talking about earlier. No way. It's the foam sandwich boat. Yeah, I've seen photos of it before, that's why I recognise it. But if you take that top of the cabin yeah. off, that hole is the first prototype. That's why it's 35 foot long, you see. Okay. We didn't design a pie 35 apart from this one. So you, you, um, you, you built that boat We built that, it, we sold it to a farmer in Ireland, in Cork, who had it for many years, and right. then it disappeared off the 
Yeah. And uh, I, I did see it turned up in Panama or somewhere, but now it's in Aruba. Yeah. It was owned by a Frenchman. He sent me some pictures of before and after, after he'd done right. some work on it. And, um, yeah. Amazing. So, foam so, sandwich. So, it's foam sandwich. It was very well built, huh? yeah, I did yeah, it myself. Yeah. <laughs> in fact, I can probably find it in People of the Sea. Let me have a oh. look. Mm. There, here. There it is. That's that is it. That is. You can see the same hull here. And that yeah. was us building it in. In you know, it, it was built upside down on the mold, mm. and then we took the whole thing out, turned it over, and lifted the mold out. And that's when this outer skin became a bit like a banana. Uh, okay, it was yeah. pale yellow anyway because yeah. of the foam <laughs> color. <laughs> But that's that boat. It was a nice boat. It took part in the Round Britain race and did pretty well in it. Mm. And uh, pretty durable. But oh, amazing. somebody made it solid. The cross beams either being replaced or. Oh, yeah, you were telling me about Yeah, you were yeah about it had lashed beams, you see, and now it's got a big deck cover. But is it still for sale? Or? I just saw that. Ah. I literally just saw that. Uh, it's uh, not available. Sold. Oh, well, never mind. It's got a pretty horrible deck cabin there. Oh, yeah. yeah, this big uh, looks like a yeah. tran transformer. So, have you, have you uh, got another one? Yeah, it says year 1978. There you are. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's ours. That's yeah, all it's I've good got. to know that it's, it still exists. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that yeah. is what? It's 44 years old. Yeah, yeah. 44 years old. Yeah. I'll, if I find any more, I'm going to show you. Well, I've got you, because <laughs> yeah. there's no one better to ask than you yeah. about this sort of stuff. Yeah. I'll have a little browse tonight and see if I can find anything. Okay, good. But yeah, no, thank you very much again for your time. It's funny, out of three, I knew two of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But you, you probably keep good contact with the builders and everything, so you uh, know. Some, yeah, but yeah. only some. There's loads of them I don't know Right. At all, actually. It just depends on whether they're in touch with me and some I know well what they're doing and they keep asking me questions mm -hmm. and others I just have never heard yeah, of. Yeah. Oh. But there are a lot of Tiki 38s around now actually. Yeah, yeah. So my time at James Warham Designs has come to an end and uh, Hanukkah has a little gift for me. <laughs> Thank you so right. much. <laughs> well, here yeah, we've got a copy of uh, People of the Sea. Thank you so much. I've asked Hannah to sign it for me as well. Yeah, well, seeing as I'm co-author of it, I can do. Yeah. Right. Okay. Oh, thank you so much. There you are. Oh. You know, enjoy that. Yes, amazing. Well, thank you so much for yeah. your hospitality, cooking all those lovely meals <laughs> and uh, showing me around and teaching me and and helping me. Well, you're welcome. It was yeah. a, a pleasure to get to know you. Yeah. And hopefully yeah. we'll get, get to know each other better in the future. Yeah, Maybe yeah. Two boats will meet one day. Yeah, yeah. In a nice place. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That would be lovely. And maybe you could come and sail on Gaia sometime. For uh, a bit. Maybe next summer you'll have a yeah, spell. Yeah. You can come and join us for a little bit. Absolutely. Yeah. I'd love yeah. that. Thank and you And you so never much. know, you might end up with my sister and brother on this boat. Yeah, 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 yeah <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So we've been talking a little bit. Uh, Hanukkah's brother-in-law's uh, have... Uh, and sister and brother-in-law have a, a warren. So. Yeah, and they have a Nara, which it has been modified, but it, mm. it's, it's well set up. And yeah, yeah. So he's going to yeah, be looking yeah. at it sometime. Yeah, Along yeah. with a few others and see what happens. Yeah, yeah. All right, stay tuned because I have a little bit of news for you. Uh, but I'd just like to say how much of an amazing trip this was, how open and honest Hanukkah was with me. So useful for me. And she wasn't, you know, trying to sell the idea. She was, you know, she went into everything, such as, you know, there are good ones, there are bad ones, and how to look for them. And it was a really wholesome weekend. It was really nice getting to know her and getting to know Warrams a bit more. Um, and I'd just like to thank everyone for watching this video and the last couple of videos, which have done really well. Um, the last two have gone above 100,000 views, which is so good. So nice to see everyone's interested in this. And just a massive thank you as well to everyone who clicked uh, the PayPal link in the description, helping me to, well, let's get to that little bit of news. <laughs> uh, I've booked tickets to 
fly to Costa Rica because there is a very time sensitive a very time sensitive warren boat available for just pennies for for very cheap so i'll go into that next week stay tuned for it uh, it's going to be an epic adventure going to costa rica <laughs> like a week before christmas <laughs> two weeks before christmas and it's uh yeah I'm, I'm quite well traveled but this is daunting for me so uh, I'm kind of invested a lot into this so we'll see how that goes but looking forward to showing you that video I may not be able to post a video next Friday because of that so yeah thanks for watching thanks for keeping updated and see you in hopefully next week's video if not then the week after and uh, it'll be pretty much Christmas time then <laughs> so yeah Alright, thank you.